Hey guys, thank you for watching the video. If you guys in today's video, we're going to talk about the iPhone SE first generation going into 2023. Now, this phone has been around for some time. In fact, it was released back in March of 2016. So this phone is just a little over six years now. It is going to be making seven years in a few months going into 2023. So you're not going to be expecting a lot, but there are some things that we can expect and we're going to talk about this iPhone. So let's dive right into it. As you can see here, very small phone. This is a four inch uh, display that we have here. Very small and compact phone, but really a unique design, which you see now even the iPhone lineup bringing back that solid design, which are these flat bezels and that body shape that we have here. This is a aluminum body, as you can see here, well built overall. You got the headphone jack going for it, these uniquely built speakers on it. You got Touch ID here, and if we turn it back here, you see this whole design here. You do get that 12 megapixel camera on the back, the iPhone and the iPhone SC here label on it, a unique design when it was released back in 2016. Now, the iPhone SC here does come equipped with Apple's A, 9 chip with about 2 gigs of RAM, which was going to improve in from the previous generation. Now, if you compare it to a newer iPhone SE here, which it's up to third generation, now you, of course, aren't going to be comparing it, but if you were to compare it, that phone now, this is very limited in terms of its resource. Now, the iPhone SE here started with around limited space as well, so you can get it maximum of uh, starting from like 32 gig, you can get it up to 128 gig in terms of storage, but that is pretty limited for the phone. Even when it comes to things like the battery here, we do get around 1624 mAh capacity size battery, which again, if you think about it, it is a very small phone. And because it is a small body phone, we don't expect the phone to get that much battery life. But if you really look at it, the phone gets around somewhere between 12 to 13 hours of video playback, which now if you compare it to the new iPhone SE third generation, which gets about 15 hours of video playback, doesn't seem like the iPhone SE here, here the first generation has made too much improvement to the third generation on the new iPhone here. And you'll talk about other things like the camera here. As I mentioned, the back camera is 12 megapixel camera, but the front camera for your selfie is only 1.2 megapixel camera. So again, front camera, pretty much not the greatest when it comes to taking your selfies here, but you'll be able to be surprised that you'll be able to take some good photos here. You got things like, as you can see, square and pano mode. You got video recording. You can surprisingly take 4K video and 30 frames per second, again, it's an upgraded improvement, but of course, other features that you get on a new phone, like night mode, you won't be able to have access to it. And if you think about the iPhone 14 lineup, things like cinematic mode, action mode aren't available. So again, for a phone, for a very average user that's just looking for an okay camera, the iPhone SE here does have that okay camera to still take some decent photos. Now moving on to the next aspect of the phone is the software of it. And this is going to be a big thing for the iPhone SE here. So as you can see here, when I open it up, it says iOS 16 preview, but this phone isn't supported on iOS 16. In fact, you're stuck with iOS 15, which is the last major update you can get on this phone. And you can take advantage of those well, last feature updates from iOS 15. The thing about the iPhone SE here though, is that Apple is still going to be supporting the software update for minor security f updates and fixes and any bugs that happen. And that's kind of the thing with Apple phones is that Apple continues to do that just to provide those updates to make sure your phone is secure and doesn't have any issues that could be potentially causing you to not use this phone. So you'll see those updates happening as you can see here. We're on iOS 15, but we can also get this new update if we wanted to really and kind of update to fix those you know, security issues that were released for it. But taking it back to things like apps here. So because iOS 15 is only one year old iOS, which later this year we'll see iOS 17 come out, it will be two year in terms of iOS update. We see that most apps that we have for the majority of the part are still working here when it comes to our social media apps or uh, apps that are popularly used by everyone, you'll see that you are able to use it. Sometimes the apps themselves might be running an older version of the app. So if there's new features of the apps and the app wants you to update it, you won't be able to update it, but you can still use the app, which again is a good thing for someone looking to use the app. So, but don't be surprised if there's an app out there has an update and you're not able to use it. To a certain point, maybe next year we'll see that some of the apps might no longer work on iOS 15, which 
would be pretty bad for the phone but again that's kind of the way technology works in terms of updates here so as you can see here i'm opening up most of the app Generally, if you notice here, it takes about somewhere between a couple seconds upward to five to even 10 seconds when it comes to opening up the app. But once it's opened up, even like YouTube, as you can see here, you'll be able to start streaming videos, music, and most of the other stuff that you need. So it's a phone that for average user will get you just enough performance to get you by. So you know, bringing up to the, our you know, final Point is, is the iPhone SC first generation worth it going into 2023? Or simple answer, it's going to be no, it's not worth it. If you're looking for a phone, especially if you're thinking of getting it, we wouldn't recommend it. Consider it like the iPhone um, second generation of the SC, or if you can, with the third generation, if you pay a little bit more, which the iPhone SC, the third generation, still get the touch ID and it's a compact phone and updated chip. You're paying around four hundred dollars or so. You don't have to consider paying seven, eight hundred dollars like the iPhone 14 lineup here. And the iPhone SE, if you're still using it and you're not having issues, but you simply need a phone to make things like simply just calling and texting and light browsing and using your basic app. If you have the phone and don't have the budget for it, it's gonna get you by. But again, a phone that we wouldn't consider. It's gonna be worth it for you to buy today just because of the cost of course the iphone sc now you can get it for under 50 dollars or so on ebay or amazon because apple no longer produces the phone on their direct store or in online so you're going to be looking at ebay or amazon for this phone so simply put it the iphone sc because it is end of its life because it doesn't get any more software update it's going to be kind of coming down to the wire if you have this phone that it's probably time to update or upgrade to a newer phone so that's our thought on the iphone sc first generation going into 2023 we want to hear from you guys what's your thought on the iphone sc leave a comment in the comment section if you used it if you upgraded from it or certainly any sort of experience you had with it while you're at it if you can hit that like and subscribe button really appreciate you guys see you guys next time